Hi everyone, I am Mafe and I'm a senior product designer here at Avo Academy. And today we're gonna go through some steps in how to create a UX UI portfolio that gets you hired using Nolio. So Nolio, it's a new portfolio builder created by designers for designers. So what this means is that with Nolio, you're gonna have access to a set of tools that are gonna help you create quick, but very effective portfolios with the end user in mind. So what this means is that everything in Nolio is organized and created so you can put together a portfolio that recruiters and hiring managers can go through very easily and with the best user experience. Before going into Nolio and reviewing the steps that you need to follow to create a portfolio that gets you hired, there are three goals that we have to keep in mind. So the first thing is that this portfolio should reflect who you are. It should show the recruiters and the hiring managers a glimpse into your own personality. The reason why recruiters and hiring managers come to your portfolio is because they already reviewed something, your resume or something that got them there. So by default, they think that you can design. What they want to see here is who you are and what is your design process. So don't be afraid to show the great achievements and also the learning curves that you've had to go through to make you the designer that you are today. The second thing we have to keep in mind for portfolio creating is that portfolios need to be short and sweet. And the third thing, we have to make sure that every section is very clear, especially the case studies. They have to really clearly show what is your design process. Now that we have our three steps in mind, let's get to it. And the first step is really simple. All you have to do is check the description below and check the Nolio link, which is going to take you to the portfolio builder. In here, all you have to do is either click here in sign up or create your portfolio. Here, you can create your account using Google or simply filling out the form. So once you've created your account, which is very simple, you'll arrive here to this homepage where you will choose a template. A very cool thing about Nolio is that often you won't have to start anything from scratch. There are so many like templates and pre-built components that you can use through different parts of the website. So the first thing we're going to do is basically pick a template and I'm going to choose this one and I'm just going to click in use template. So step one when starting a portfolio is choosing your color palette and your typography. Nolio makes this process really easy. All you have to do is come here to design and here in colors, you'll see a ton of presets that are ready to use. And if you go back here, you will see the typography. A common challenge we face as designers is choosing a right combination of typefaces. Nolio also makes it very easy and you have here a ton of options where you can choose. However, Nolio is a platform built by designers for designers and we know that sometimes we don't want presets but we want to have control over the design. That's why in every option you will always find the button to customize where you can come and tweak things to match your style and your personality, which is one of our main goals. So now that you know how to choose your colors and typography, let's go over the navigation. So over here in more settings, you'll find navigation bar, Well, you'll be able to customize the navigation bar. So you will be able to change font size, uh, change uh, logo. So here, for example, instead of using an icon, which you can choose as well, and you have a ton of icons to choose from, uh, you can say uh, custom name and for example here we're just going to type my name and here you can explore a ton of other settings like button styles, layout where you can change basically how everything is aligned. So I encourage you to come here and play and customize it. But the other very important thing is the sections a portfolio should have. So first and foremost, obviously we should be able to see your work. We should have an about section where recruiters and hiring managers can learn more about you. And there are two other very important sections. The other one, it's going to be the resume. So a pro tip here is add a link to a PDF of your resume. The reason why is that sometimes for many reasons, people need your resume as a PDF. So instead of creating a page where you have all your experience and you mimic your resume in the portfolio, just keep it simple for you and for recruiters. Simply create a PDF. 
and add the link over here. And the other one should be a link to your LinkedIn. So to add more sections to your navigation, all you have to do is come here to pages and click here, new page. So in this exercise, I'm just going to create the link to the resume and I'll just specify the page name and I'll just drag a copy of my resume and you hit create. In the free version, you have access to this three pages. If you want to add more, for example, your LinkedIn, you should uh, upgrade to premium. There are a ton of reasons why you would like to uh, upgrade to premium. So you will be able to have more case studies, your own custom domain, and basically I uh, have access to premium sections. So moving on with the exercise, let's talk about the intro blurb. So I'm just going to paste here my intro blurb. And a few things you should keep in mind here is that it should be short and sweet, right? It should be a perfect combination between personal and professional. So try to add a bit about you, your experience. Uh, if you don't have a ton of experience, then for example, highlight some of your skills and uh, also try to add something personal about you. Another pro tip is try to avoid using things like I design usable products or things like that. Unfortunately, those phrases are a bit cliche. And as I mentioned earlier, there's a reason why you already have recruiters and hiring managers in your portfolio. In their mind, you already know how to design. So you don't have to tell them that you design beautiful products because that is already a given. To quickly go over some Nolio tools, you can highlight text and uh, here you can change the color and make it, I don't know, more brighter. Obviously, always keep accessibility in mind. I encourage you to use different uh, plugins and tools to ensure accessibility. I'm going to leave in the description below a few links to some accessible tools so you make sure that you are spot on there. Also, if you want to edit this further, you can select any section and remove it. And if you want to add something, you just have to hover over a component and add a new item. And here you will find a complete list of other features you can insert. If by any chance you decide that this is not the kind of hero section you want, you can always click here and you will find a ton of options you can choose from. But if you want to change altogether your template, you can come here to the sign and in home template, you can choose a new one. Now let's talk about the about section. So to create the about section, you just have to click in about and here you can start from a blank page. Just click to add an item, but if you don't want to start from scratch, you can always click here to add a section and you can browse between all the presets they already have and you can start editing your section. So now that we've covered the design, let's talk about the content. So here are some tips for your about section. So first, start with your name. It is like an introduction to you. So you want to greet people by telling them who you are. Another thing about like the tone is you want to keep it professional, but here is when you can go personal. You can talk about your hobbies, you can talk about your family, things you love. So don't be afraid to show a little bit of who you are. This is a great section to highlight your experience or talk about your skills. And last but not least, include a picture of yourself. So here you can be a little bit creative. So for example, if you like pottery and someone took a picture of you while you are molding the clay, that's a cool picture you can add in this section as well. However, there's something very cool about Nolio. If by any chance you run out of inspiration, you don't know where to start in any of the pages, you can always come here into the checklist and here you'll find some tips and recommendations of things you can include in every section. Okay, now that we have those two sections, let's begin adding projects. All you have to do is scroll down and here begin creating or starting a case study. And this is going to take you directly into the project. As usual, you can start with a blank page or you can use one of the templates. But before we start uh, working on this particular case, let's go back to work and let's adjust the thumbnail and the description. So a few things you should keep in mind when creating the thumbnails. A good practice is to left align everything. This is going to improve readability. Uh, make sure to add your role, the name of the project, and what type of digital product was it? Was it a B2B, a B2C? And finally, write a brief introduction. 
Another cool thing about Nolio is that for recruiters and hiring managers, adding tags to each case study, it's a really quick way to understand what this project is about. So additionally to adding the description, you can also make most of the section and add a tag as well. So now let's talk about the thumbnail. So things you should consider when adding a thumbnail. So first and foremost, export your images in a very high quality. So a portfolio should shine for the crispiness and the quality of the images. So make sure you're always exporting in high quality. Avoid using those very elaborate mockups that are like in 3D that look more like you're selling a phone that actually showing your mockup. I know it's not as aesthetic as that, but usually having like a flat screen where you can see your design very clearly, it's preferable. So another very important tip is add first the projects you are most proud of, either because you work for a bigger brand or because we're the most challenging projects. And later you can put other types of projects, conceptual projects and so on. In Nolio, it's also very easy creating a thumbnail. All you have to do is edit here and change the thumbnail. You can upload an image of your own or you can basically choose uh, the layout, device and background. So now that the thumbnail is created, if you ever wanted to also change the uh, layout style, you can come here and basically choose a different layout style. And now to edit the case study, all you have to do is go to case study page. And since Nolio is already giving us a ton of presets and templates, here you will find the basic information you should have in the top part. So remember, recruiters and hiring managers don't have a ton of time to go through everything. So this part, including uh, like the thumbnail, project title, the description of the project, the overview, role, tools, timeline, problem and solution, those are the basic things you should have in your first portion of a case study. So another cool thing about working with Nolio is that every preset and template is already giving you a hint of how long every component should be. So for example, here, when you're adding your own overview, try not to make it longer than this. But let's say that for whatever you reason, you don't like this layout so much, you can always come here and uh, go to project summary and choose from other options. So once you created the project overview, and by the way, creating the thumbnail, I know can be a little bit daunting. Here, Nolio offers you some tips if you're not sure where to start. The next thing you want to add below, like your problem and the solution, is maybe a carousel or a gallery of your hi-fi designs. You want to show them like the final result. Because if the hiring manager or the recruiter don't have much time and they just go through this first portion of your uh, case study, they will have a great idea of what you are and what you did here in this project. So to add the gallery, you just have to add the new section and come here to the mock-up session where you'll be able to uh, post the image gallery. So for your gallery, how do you know what kind of images you should include? So as a rule of thumb, avoid login screens or splash screens. And this also goes for your thumbnail. Avoid that because what you want to show is your craft as a designer. Those are very simple pages that really don't tell much about your skills and your abilities, but other complex screens do tell a story. So always try to put the most complex uh, screens, the ones that you gave most uh, thought, research that you can justify the best. So once you have your gallery, the next thing you want to add is a uh, navigation for your portfolio. In some portfolios, you may see that designers use skill bars. We encourage you to stay away from that. It is also a cliche like I design beautiful products. And the reason why is because that really doesn't show your skills. And it's kind of weird measuring a skill like in a progress bar. So instead of making you look cool and as a forward thinking designer, that is going to cause the opposite effect. To add your navigation, you simply have to click here and come to inner navigation. And here you can add the navigation to your case study. Then you can also customize and keep adding sections as you go. So what this is going to do is going to create like an anchor menu so people will be able to quickly navigate to a specific section 
if your hiring manager wants to learn something specific about you. So now what comes next? It's the meat of the case study. However, the content of each case study is going to be very different project from project. So you can have things like uh, the project kickoff, you can have uh, meetings, you can have all the research process, you can include heuristic evaluation, competitive analysis, interviews, surveys, uh, in ideation, you can show sketches, like what was your process, you can add uh, wireframes, user stories, user flows. You can also have, if you created a design system, your process to creating the design system. You can have a style guide, typography. So every single project, it's going to be very unique. But there are a few things I really want to highlight. So first, more than having a collage of everything you did and everything you know how to do, instead, provide context and explain why you decided to use that specific methodology. Why did you conduct a competitive analysis? Why did you create a user flow? Why did you create lo-fi wireframes? Why? What is the reason why you created that specific deliverable? Additionally to the why that it's super important because it's going to tell recruiters and hiring managers what is your train of thought, what is your process, is what was the result. So how did, for example, your research impacted or informed your design decisions? How each part of the process is intertwined with other? That is very important and it's going to set your portfolio apart from other designers. That being said, I want to give you three pro tips that are going to help you elevate your portfolio case studies. So number one, highlight keywords and highlight those whys and those parts where you inform your design decision. So here you can see I bolded the why, why we conducted a competitive analysis. Here you have uh, some of the findings and what we decided to do with that information as well. My second pro tip is to include metrics, especially success metrics if you have them. So if you conducted a test, what were the results or overall uh, how was the project before you and how was the project after your intervention? If you don't have the success metrics, something you can do is simply describe how your design solved the client's problem. And last but not least, another thing that can help you stand out is to add a reflection section. In this section, you can talk about what did you learn from this project? What was the biggest challenge? What would you do differently in a next iteration if you had more time? The reason why this is important is because it's going to summarize what was the experience you gained through this project. So after this, what you have to do is basically replicate that in your other case studies. As I mentioned earlier, put first the ones that are more relevant that be because you learn the most, because you work for an important brand. So there's like a final review you should do before submitting your portfolio into your job applications. But before we go over that checklist, I want to show you something really cool. Other things you can do here with Nolio is improve the SEO and how you show up in um, search engines. So here you can add how is your search result going to look. And one of the things that we are most excited about is the integration with Microsoft Clarity. When you integrate your portfolio with Microsoft Clarity, you can do what you do best. UX, UI, your portfolio. So this is going to give you access to a tool that records the screen, that gives you click maps, heat maps, scroll maps. So you can actually see how your users are interacting with your portfolio and iterate and improve like we do in our daily basis. Now, finally, before you send your portfolio in your job applications, make sure you do the following. So first and foremost, make sure all your links work. Go through every single page, every single link, everything, and check that everything is actually redirecting where it's supposed to. The second thing before submitting your portfolio is check for grammar and spelling. Probably in the video you saw that I have the Grammarly Insights. Grammarly is a great tool, but you can also check with ChatGPT. So there are multiple tools you can use. Just make sure that your grammar and spelling are on point. And last but not least, Send your portfolio to friends and family, or even better, to a design mentor. 
What you want is to receive feedback. It would be great if you could have a professional feedback on your portfolio. So that's it. Thank you so much for joining me today in this video. We hope that this was useful and we wish you the best, the best of luck in your job search. And uh, we hope you have a ton of fun creating your portfolio. If you have any question, please leave it in the comments below. So we hope to see you in the next time.